Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Tuesday and Thursday. Remember, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D dash Oracle, O-R-C-L-E dot com. That's Ord dash Oracle dot com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, did you get my charts? I have your charts. I have All it right. up. Uh, yes, right. I do. Some really interesting stuff going on here. Um, actually, uh, the trolls are starting to come out, at least on my side, as far as uh, the gold market, not so much the S&P market, but the gold market. And that's usually a pretty good sign that you're getting close to the turning point here. But anyhow, the, we'll, we'll get right to it. The bottom window is a 50-day average of the GDX up, down, volume percent. Yep. And this chart goes back to 2013. And every time uh, that indicator got below minus 20, the market flipped sideways. And if you look at the top window, which is GDX, I marked the times actually circled in red when that indicator got below minus 20 or lower. Okay. And and the market, you know, flipped sideways for several weeks. Even you know, at 2016, I think flipped sideways for several months. And I think we had this on before uh, several months ago or yes uh, we, we, we talked about it. yes i think a lot of times when this indicator hits minus 20 the market flips sideways and in june around june 15th uh it hit below minus 20 and more or less uh basically since may we've been br pretty much going sideways here um so and every time this market went sideways if you notice the indicator kept going up okay so, so that's a positive purchase. We're pretty much uh, right now. Uh, we're pretty much m matching the uh, uh, late June, early July lows. Right. And and uh, as, uh, so, so what I'm trying to say is, even though we're pretty much unchanged over the last month, this indicator keeps going up. Right. Well, we so actually did that's, today. That's a, I'm sorry, Tim. Well, we actually did today. Uh, is pretty is pretty cool actually. We spiked the low of last of uh, June by ten cents. It's going to have light of volume and it rejected lower price. It rejected the uh, twenty eight seventy six. We went to twenty eight sixty seven and now we're twenty nine fifteen. The volume right now is only ten million versus seventeen point five million. So this is intriguing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, especially, like I said earlier when we, when we first came on, you know, the trolls are out, you know, and, and whatever. <laughs> and so I'm thinking this is probably, uh, you know, if the trolls really kind of come out and criticize, you know, you, they're usually pretty good at picking I say. Uh, turning points in the market. So <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, yeah. so anyway, but go back and actually look at the, uh, uh, this is a, a pretty good comparison. If we go back and look at the June or the 2016 low when it hit below minus 20, actually got lower than that. And as the market moves sideways over the next six months, that indicator went basically straight up. Same thing that's happening with basically all those conditions I have circled in red did the same thing. When I found out the rally really starts is when they both, or when the this indicator, the bottom indicator, up down volume closes above zero. Okay. And that's, if it once it closes above zero and stays above zero, that's when the the, the rally uh, really starts, and that's and all of that blue sh shaded area. Yeah, um, is is when that uh, indicator is above zero. So I don't know what I don't have that number right now. What that number is, but when I put this uh, on earlier today, it was minus two fifty, which is almost to zero. I uh, see. So and we're and we're basically testing you know the previous lo uh, lows of of June. And early July, so you know we could be looking at the low right here right now, or raffle down close to. It's not weeks away. It could be a you know, if the market uh, rallies any at all from this point, most likely that indicator will close above zero, suggesting a rally will start. Yeah, so, they never make it uh, easy uh, in the gold market. There's no doubt about that, man. Yeah. Yeah. It flips, it flips the chart too. Okay. Uh, this is a. Um, a, a lot shorter time frame, and uh, what I actually want to point out, you know, there's there's uh, programs out there that they call uh, I forgot what they, uh, anyhow, that the, what happened in the past happens in the future, 
And if you can identify padding recognition is what I'm trying to yeah. uh, point out here. And I have a circled area back in uh, late 2021. Yes. And I, 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 lit, you know, I had a, a low area and, uh, labeled number one, then a high area number two, and a three. And if you look at that pattern, we're similar here. You know, we had a, a double top at two. We pulled back but kept above the previous lows of one. That's yes. what we're doing right now. And we're having a bullish divergence, you know, as this indicator, those two bottom indicators, are both making higher highs as the S&Ps are making lower highs. These two indicators measure the up-down volume and advanced climb. So it's kind of an internal strength indicator. It tells you what's really going on with GDX in itself. So I'm thinking we're looking uh, pretty close to a low in this vicinity. And if uh, circled... The, the one in uh, early 2000 or late 2021 works out to be similar to what we're doing right now. Right. And the next rally should take us above uh, at, uh, number two. I see that. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is pretty close. You know, they look really similar, and that's all that needs to happen. They don't have to. They have to rhyme. They don't have to match perfectly. Right. And right. I'm, I'm thinking these two patterns are rhyming right here. Yeah. So. Um, Pretty cool. Time will tell, but, uh, you know, this thing could kick, uh, kick in gear, I think, you know, in a matter of days, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe quicker, I don't know. So nice. I wouldn't point that out. Okay, so, so then want to go to number three? Yeah, we, we can do number three real quick. We got time. No, we got time. Uh, I'm going to keep you on another right. sector uh, Sector uh, anyway. So that's because I want to talk about the, the S&Ps. This is going to be the S&Ps we're talking about now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the S&Ps. The last Friday, I got it marked um, 1.79 on that trend yes. and a 440 down tick reading. When that happens, that that's what I call a bullish combination. When that happens, market makes a bottom that day to as late as two days later. Well, if you notice that volume on last Friday had high volume. Yes. And it had a big spike in volume. And a couple of days before that, you had another big spike in volume. That, that a couple of days, or it would be what? It would be Friday, it'd be Wednesday. Last Wednesday kind of failed because you... You broke a new low on basically increased volume, but the volume really jumped up about 30%, suggesting another exhaustion move. But the day of last Friday had panic in the ticks and trend, and panic always happened at bottoms. Uh, so I was looking to, to get bullish on a test of Friday's low on lighter volume. Uh, I, I did this earlier in the day today, and volume is going to be much lighter. Um, if we rally too much today, you know, I may pass on that trade because the upside is basically Friday's high because that had high volume. And it's also last Wednesday had high volume. There's also a gap up there. Right. So those two high volume days, you go up and test the previous high and on uh, yeah, lighter just, volume, just, you can't get through it. Just stay right there for a second, Tim. We're going to take a quick break. Right. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are going to be coming back because we're going to be talking about the S&P right now and, and kind of like where the gap is and the way down and what uh, Tim's thinking about that. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 172, Nasdaq's off 127, S&P's are off 23. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. The Dow, Dow Industrials down 149. You get the Nasdaq off 116, S&P's are off 20. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. We are talking about the uh, S&P at this particular point. And don't forget, folks, you can meet, uh, you, uh, you can reach Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. Yeah, so Tim, so I, I, I'm looking at this, this chart that you're, you're looking at here. So let me ask you this, is that uh, when we look at the high, so we have that high volume high. In this particular right. case, you're figuring that you the, the gap is going to be, now the gap's going to be resistance, right? Is that correct? Yeah, the gap is going to be resistance. At one point, you know, that bearish engulfing pattern, that was... Uh, uh, July 27th, that very yes. engulfing pattern. And it had a big, not a big jump in volume, but... It was a good one, though, yeah. Highs are tested, right. and I thought we'd go back up and test that high. Right. And I don't think we're going to get through the gap. If you look at those volume, you know, those two days where that gap is, you know, uh, last Friday we didn't uh, had high volume, and that Wednesday where the gap occurred last Wednesday right, cause also had high volume. That's quite a bit of resistance there. Two days, not just one day, but two days. So, you, you, that my opinion, if you go up and get into that gap, it's going to be on lighter volume. 
that gap's going to be resistance. Right. As and, Tim, uh, when Tim's talking about, folks, is that when we first, you know, had the gap, the gap did 93 million. Then the second high volume day, you know, had 100 million. Um, and yeah, that's I, I, and of course, today we only got 57 million. Um, we'll see how this shakes right. out. Yeah, pretty cool how this is setting up, actually. Right. So, you know, we we tested uh, last Friday's low, which you said it had 100 million. And so, you know, if you look at today's volume, we're not even going to come close to that. And that's the reason why um, the market's rallying here. It couldn't get through Friday's low. Um, so if it can't take out the previous low with volume, it'll try to take out the previous high with volume. Well, the previous high is pretty much where that gap is. Right. So, or you, you can take Friday's high, which is yes. the same, pretty close to it. Right. So if we go up there and test that area on lighter volume, that's going to be resistance. Right. So it's, it's kind of garbage. You know, if we keep rallying here on the close, I might pass on this trade um, only because there may not be enough room, you know, if you're only getting a, a percent out of this thing. No, I, I can see that. Know, I, no, I know what you're saying, right. Yeah, you know, then why take the risk, you know? And, right. And here's another thing. Uh, from yesterday, we, we uh, let's see, yeah, yesterday... We quote, we created a gap, you know, we gapped up yesterday. But yesterday was Monday, we gapped up, left an open gap, and we're, we're filling that gap right now. Yes, we are. And, and we're filling that gap on higher volume. As, as you're speaking, I, I have the spy up, Tim. That's what I'm doing, okay? Right. So I just changed and, charts just for a second because the, the fill of that gap and the side of the spy would be 45073. You know, we're below it right now, but that's what we're trying to do. There's no doubt about that, man. Yeah. Right. So if now you fill that gap on higher volume. Okay. So so now you, you got a little bit of a, uh, uh, you know, because if you test it, if you test a gap on lighter volume, the resistance. If you test a gap on higher volume, which most likely today's volume will be at least equal, if not higher, than the gap we created on Monday. So that means we could test it again. So it could be a little bit mushy in here. Is what I'm thinking. Right. You get what I'm saying? Oh yeah, no, I definitely or, do. What well, you know? It's intriguing. If I can just switch gears on you just for a second. If you go over to the cues, you know the the spy and the cues are set up differently. And if you go to the cues, which is so interesting, is that what's stopping them like a in like a heartbeat is the day going all the way back to. Let me see what day this is into the. 16th of June, you know, we had 80 million shares there. The Qs, that price point was uh, 367.46. You know, yes, and today we made it down to 368, but you can see you're talking 40 million going against 80 million. <laughs> it's like, okay, man, <laughs> you know, it's. All right, that's the, uh, I'm kind of, I just got over there. You see and, what I mean? Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, we're also running into the highs of June here too, which is sport area. Yes. No. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, and uh, so we broke a new low. A little previous on lighter volume. Yeah. There's a gap up. Uh, yeah. There's a, high, there's a high volume gap there too. Yes, uh, there uh, is. Last Wednesday. There is. Uh, which is around 380 or so. That's probably could stop it if we ran into that gap yep, on lighter volume. I see that. Right. So kind of a mush market and that's what we're going to kind of deal with probably over the next month or maybe even two months i think okay. it's just a garbage market yeah so it's, it's going to be you know the trending market you know when the vix stays below 17 you got a good chance of a trending market and now the vix is kind of rising you know it's close to 17 and stuff so it's going to turn into kind of a trading market and if you stay too long on one side, you may get it eaten up a little bit. But yeah. ultimately, we still get down. You know, we, we talked previously about that 420 area uh, on the S and P's. I think that at some point before the summer's over, that may be tested, and that's where the next I think major buy signal is going to occur. That's 420 on the SPYs. So, right but between now and then, it could be a little bit rough. I think so. Because this is this is quite a rejection of lower price. Today, for sure, man. And you have lighter volume. I mean, yeah, the S and P's right. just rallied what eighty two, so you got eighteen. You got thirty eight points. We just rallied off the bottom. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, so I don't know if it gets too close to that 
you know, upside, you know, I might just pass on a trade. And, yeah, but, no, I can see know, that. We may come back down a little bit, maybe get some more energy in the trend, you know, and maybe try again. And Right. You know, I don't well, know. Well, particularly, uh, I mean, because when, when, I, when, I I look at, when I look at the SPY, Tim, right, it's still saying to me that we got a small ABC down, like the 442 that, you know, now it's turned into a complex one because, you know, last Wednesday, when's, when's no, let's see. Today's Tuesday. You know, last Friday we took out a B point, took it out with volume. You know, like it'd be a 442. Yesterday it turned into a complex one. Now it's a complex one again. Do you know what I mean? But so yeah, it's gonna get yeah, interesting so, here. So I know no. you play options. You know, I wonder if you caught that trade this morning. Yes, um, I did. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> you still long? No, 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 no. I caught the shot side. <laughs> Okay. And yeah, I'm well, out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, we're going to have to talk about that one of these days. And yeah, get a game what we're talking about, folks, is the one day options. Uh, there's something else, man. But you better make sure. Tim and I have done hundreds of thousands of OEX options. And that's, <laughs> this was, yeah. this was white lightning that's in spades out here today, Tim. <laughs> yeah. I could imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause it, they don't invite, I don't think they even trade anymore. They don't. The OEX they, they don't. They don't. They don't. And the, the difference yeah. is, if you traded OEX options, folks, you want to look at these, because the difference is there is, the spread is like a penny. You can get out of 100 contracts on a spread with one penny. Two pennies at the most, which is unbelievable. So, yeah, you know. a lot of liquidity. It's a lot of liquidity. Now, I only trade the spies. I don't trade, you know, they have the spies, they have the cues. I only trade the spies. So I don't know, the, you know, but I'm sure, well, I'm not sure because I, I only trade the spies, but liquidity is great. Tim, you have a great night, a safe night. We look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right, thank you. Thank you.